Hey guys, if you are new to this channel, you may have seen this lab open in many of my previous videos, and know that I have it for a while. And let's to be honest and say, the relationship I had with it was rather abusive. I have used it to dry a lot of things that weren't supposed to be put in there in the first place. This led to the severe rusting on the front panel as well as those less severe rusting happening all over the place. All in all, it looked like something that was picked up on a massive lab auction sale. Those problems would all have been avoided if I was being a little more foreseen at the time of purchase and uh, pay the extra hundred bucks and get a stainless steel one instead. Well, I was a cheap bastard and now I'm stuck with this rusty oven. I mean, there is nothing actually wrong with it per se, it heats up as what it does, but if this problem is left untreated, it will eventually compromise its structural integrity. Besides, I need it for my future projects. I may as well just do a makeover so it will look more presentable in my upcoming videos. I remove most of the rust using a file before I proceed to the acid cleaning step. By the way, there seems to be a big misconception on what the rust is really consists of. Many believe rust is just simply ferric oxide. But actually, it is a combination of iron hydroxide and various iron oxide hydrates. Oxygen by itself is actually not that good at corroding iron. The redox reaction is always coupled by moisture. The whole topic of how rust occurs is worth a video of its own. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. Also, also, I happen to have the footage of me making iron thermite using lab grade ferric oxide. And it is clear that there is a very distinguishable color difference between those two. After I remove most of the rust mechanically, it's time to bring out the power of chemistry to deal with stubborn residual rust. Here I'm using 0.1 more of hydrochloric acid, although the concentration here isn't exactly critical. The rust will react to hydrochloric acid to yield first chloride, which is dissolved away. And just be aware that hydrochloric acid also reacts to iron to some extent, although the rate of this reaction is almost negligible at this given concentration. And then the surface is wiped with sodium carbonate soak sponge and rinsed by copious amount of water and thoroughly dried. And this is the end of this video. Okay, just kidding. We are far from done yet. The zinc coating that was once on the surface must be restored, else all the hard work we just done will be for nothing. And in order to do that, first we need 10 grams of zinc sulfate, which is then dissolved in 50 milliliter of distilled water. Okay, okay, before anyone yells at me, just be clear that I am aware in conventional zinc plating, the metal that will be plated is fully submerged in the zinc sulfate solution. And just 40 ml of solution seems a little too good to be true. Well, luckily there is a trick around it. And all we need is one of those fellows. Before everyone gets all curious about it, some of my sub might actually have seen it before. It was from a project so old that I myself almost forgot doing it. The goal on that project was only to get magnesium dioxide from those cells. I would never have thought it comes handy after all those years. It's perfect for our purposes to not only provide the source of zinc for the zinc plating, but also act as a container for the electrolyte. With the help of some bandage to soak up the zinc sulfate solution, our makeshift zinc plating device is officially complete. Just before I explain how the whole thing works, notice the panel I just cleaned is now once again covered by the thrust. This happened during the time I was preparing for the electrolyte. Well, it shows how vulnerable iron is towards oxidation without any protection. What's happening here is pretty straightforward. The zinc cylinder here acts as an anode. The metallic zinc is oxidized to zinc 2 plus ions. And the two electrons travel through the conductive zinc case and it was received by the zinc 2 plus ions from the electrolyte. This reduces it back to metallic zinc and it deposited on the iron. Essentially, we are transferring the zinc from the cylinder onto the panel using the power that's generated by the cell itself. Though so the rate of this is unbearably slow. I opt to use an external power supply to boost up the rate of zinc plating by hooking up the positive terminal to the cylinder and the negative terminal to the panel. With help of some additional power, the effect is much clearer. 
I wonder why that I didn't start with this approach. Applying a more reactive metal such as zinc onto the metal that we intend to protect from oxidation is a technique commonly known as sacrificial anode protection, and it's pretty self-explanatory. The higher reactivity of zinc allows it to better compete for oxygen with iron. As a result, zinc corrodes first, meanwhile offering protection to the iron in close proximity. This technique is often seen being applied to many ocean liners, providing protection against the chlorine-rich environment. Just like before, I clean the surface with copious amount of distilled water and thoroughly dry it. Well, at this point, I can leave it as it is. But since it's gonna show up in a lot of my future videos, I decided to go a little further for the cosmetic purpose. And well, since I did this project a while back, I'm able to show you here how well it's thought up for the year and a half of torment I continue putting it through. My deep apology for my absence over the past six months. I have no intention quitting YouTube. I just got very busy with my personal life, that's all. And here are the list of projects that I've already done. Feel free to vote in the comment section of which ones you want to see first. A big thank you goes to Daniel Smith and Raphael Wakefield and all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone support me on Patreon and get to see my video 24 hours before I put it on YouTube. Anyone support me with $3 or more will have their name listed as you see here. I really appreciate any of your support.